So, in the movie Mean Girls, Lindsay Lohan is tasked with finding this limit. Uh, now, the easiest way to do this is to use what's called L'Hopital's Rule. Uh, and I don't remember if we actually discussed L'Hopital's Rule in Calc AB or not, um, because it's not actually required to know on the AB exam, but it is a useful technique. Um, let me quickly explain what L'Hopital's Rule is. Um, L'Hopital's Rule is useful when you're trying to evaluate a limit, um, you know, a limit that you can't evaluate by direct substitution. And you can use this whenever your limit, uh, or whenever attempting direct substitution with your limit, would either end up giving you 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. Um, so as a simpler example, suppose we add uh, the limit of x over x squared plus x. <clears throat> suppose we want to know what this limit is. We try to plug in 0. Well, we'll get 0 over 0, so that doesn't help us. L'Hopital's rule says what we can do is simply take the derivative of the top and bottom. Um, now, that doesn't mean to use the quotient rule. That means actually, literally, just take the derivative of both the top and the bottom of the expression. So, this is actually the same thing as the limit as x goes to 0 of. Uh, well, what's the derivative of x? Well, that's just a 1. And what's the derivative of x squared plus x? Well, that's going to be 2x plus 1. Uh, now, in this case, if we try to plug in a 0, what we'll find is, um, you know, we get, uh, we get 1 over 1 here. So that's the limit of this expression. Uh, now, for us, what that means is, you know, we can do the same thing. We can go ahead and take the derivative of the top and bottom here. Um, now, the first thing you can notice is in the bottom of our expression, we have 1 minus cosine squared. Um, which is actually the same thing as sine squared. So we can go ahead and make that change. It's not necessary, um, you know, but it might make life a tiny bit easier. So I'm going to go ahead and just make that substitution on the bottom. I'll change that to a sine squared before we get to business. Um, once we've done that, now we can go ahead and just take the derivative of the top and bottom. So what's that going to be? Well, <clears throat> Well, let's see. We'll have the derivative of the natural log of 1 minus x. Well, the derivative of natural log is, uh, derivative of natural log of u is u prime over u. So that derivative will actually be a negative 1 over 1 minus x. The derivative of sine is cosine, so minus cosine of x all over, remember we're not using the quotient rule, we're just literally taking the derivative of the top and bottom. Uh, the derivative of sine squared, we'll go ahead and use the power rule and we'll get 2 times sine of x, that's the power part. Uh, derivative of sine is cosine, that's the trick part. Derivative of the argument is 1. Um, so what we have here, now we can actually go ahead and leave it this way, um, but again, <coughs> oops, again, you know, we, um, we don't actually need to do this, but you might notice in the bottom we have 2 times sine times cosine. Um, that's actually a trig identity. We can change that to 2 sine cosine, it's actually the same as sine of 2x. Not necessary, but again, whenever you notice these little, these little things, you can make changes. Um, so here's what we've got. Okay. We have... Uh, we have this expression right here. <clears throat> now if we go ahead and try a direct substitution again, what are we going to get? Well, let's see. We get negative 1 over 1 minus 0 minus, um, let's see, cosine of 0. Well, that's actually going to be a 1 all over um, sine of 2x. So again, plugging in a 0 here. Um, you know, if we try to plug in a 0, what we'll find is sine of 0 is 0. So if we try to plug in a 0, um, you know, we can't actually do that, but we can think about what would happen if we plugged in numbers really, really close to zero. Well, then we'd have sine of something that's really, really close to zero, so we'd have, uh, you know, something very, very small. So, let's we'll think about what this means. Something very, very, very small on the bottom. Um, so we actually end up with negative one minus one over a very small number. Or, we could say, negative 2 over a very small number. Now if the bottom is very, very small, negative 2 divided by something very, very small is going to look like a very, very large number. 
Um, so this is going to either increase or decrease without bounds, depending on which direction we come from. So we can say that the limit here does not exist. Um, we can't actually do any better than that. Um, if you take a look at the graph, we can we can verify our answer here. Let me figure out how to pull the graph up. Um, let's see. Ah, there we are. Take a look at the graph. You can see, um, you know, coming in from the left, we have it approaching infinity. Coming in from the right, we have it approaching negative infinity. So certainly as x gets closer and closer to zero, no matter which side we're coming from, we're not approaching a set number here. So the limit, in fact, does not exist. Um, so Lindsay Lohan actually has it right.